This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 5, Electrons in Atoms. Again, here are the 21 vocab words that you will be looking up. So again, repeat after me, either silently or out loud. Amplitude. Atomic emission spectrum. Atomic orbital. Alf-Bau principle. Electromagnetic radiation. Electron configuration. Energy level, frequency, ground state, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, Hertz, Hunt's rule, Pauli exclusion principle, photoelectric effect, photon, Planck's constant, quantum, quantum mechanical model, spectrum, spin, and wavelength. So just as before, you're going to watch the rest of this video, and at some point you're going to define those terms, whether it is through the chapter, which I strongly suggest, or looking in the glossary. And you might have to do a little bit of both. So again, that vocab quiz matching sometime in the future. So in section one deals with revising the atomic model. Your objective is going to be what Bohr, this guy named Bohr, this chemist Bohr, proposed that his, as his model of the atom. Uh, so you're going to see that there are different models of the atom and how it looked like over the years. So you should have watched this intro information on the atom from Bozeman Science. And here are my notes. Again, I'm going to go through these rather quickly because you should have looked at them yourself. So again, this Bohr guy, he was actually Rutherford's student. So now remember, Rutherford came up with the nucleus and the fact that the atom is mostly empty space because of his gold foil experiment. So Bohr came in and said, well, that's half good, but half not good. And why? Because he said any particle moving is going to give off some of this electromagnetic radiation and as it gives off this electromagnetic radiation there's going to be a wavelength that corresponds to it and this spectrum and that's why it's called the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation so in his model again is only based off of the hydrogen atom and remember hydrogen only has one proton which means it only has one electron so we want to remember though he said that the energy, uh, the, the electrons can only be found in certain energy levels, and they are going to absorb energy as they go from lower to higher, and they're going to release or emit energy in the term of photons as light when they return back down. So they're jumping here, and they're jumping here. And we want to remember that it has to move from one energy level to another, however. There's no in-between. Uh, gave us a nice little flow chart as he always does. And again, on the periodic table, he kind of reviewed what those numbers are, what they represent, and how we can find the number of neutrons mathematically. So the electrons also are going to give us many properties. And those outer, ooh, outer electrons are called valence electrons. They're really going to help us uh, figure out how they're going to interact with each other. Then he talked about this electron cloud, and this is what I meant before, right? The electrons can go from one step to another, like you're going up a ladder, but they're never in the middle, okay? They're never going to be in the middle between those um, ladder steps. And so we talked about how electrons are quantized. Again, those uh, it's chemists like to really, really quantify things. That's how I like to think of quantize. Uh, uh, chemists like to quantify everything, give everything a value. So we want to remember that when an electron jumps up from one to another, uh, for energy level to another, we're going to call that the excited state, and that's when those electrons are absorbing energy and moving up. And then when they come back down, they're going to emit or give us energy uh, in the form of light. So again, lower to higher versus higher to lower. Absorb energy that electron is doing versus emitting energy. So we want to keep that terminology in mind. Then he talked about this spectrum, and again, every time these electrons are jumping and giving us that energy in the form of light, that photon of energy in the form of light, uh, jumping from that higher energy level to lower, they're going to give us different colors, and this is that visible spectrum. Uh, and again, there's other uh, electromagnetic radiation as well, right, that ultra and infrared, but visible is what we're going to see in the term of light and different colors. So off to your packet of notes. So remember to pause the video, fill in the blanks, read as you write, and then play to hear my words.
So again, that Bohr model is just the energy that changes when the atom absorbs or emits light. That's what he talked about. That's what his theory was based off of these electrons uh, absorbing and emitting energy in the form of quantifying it in the form of those photons. So he proposed that these electrons are really found in specific paths, or he called them orbits around the nucleus. So because he can quantify how much energy that electron is either absorbing or emitting, he can say that, okay, then that electron has to be at a specific spot. And again, those specific spots, uh, he called them orbitals, but we're going to say that they're energy levels now. So, haha, energy levels. Remember, again, every energy level is going to contain a certain amount of energy. So the closer you are to the nucleus, the less energy you have. And that electron can, again, move from one energy level to another. So he quantified this, right? That's why it's called a quantum of energy. It's how much energy is needed for that electron to move from one energy level to another. Whether we're absorbing or we're emitting that energy, um, it's going to be a quantified. So again, that uh, electron is being absorbed, is going from the ground to the excited state. And when electrons are emitting that energy, it's moving from that excited state down to ground state. So those are terms that we're going to uh, learn or understand more in depth when we do the flame test lab. Um, but you want to remember uh, that this energy is quantified, right? That's why they call it a quantum, and it's in the form of light, and it's in the form of photons. So we want to remember absorb from lower to higher, ground to excited and emitting from higher to lower or excited to ground. So that's going to be really important to remember um, here and in the future. So again, this photon that I keep talking about is just those electrons emitting, again, take, take, giving off that energy, and it's always in the form of light. And depending on the jump, depending on where that excited state is and going to the ground state, going again higher from lower, we're going to see a different array of colors, and that's where we get the rainbow. So I believe in your notes, if you want to either pause and write or listen and then write, but what you want to draw is you want to draw these lines here and you want to say, okay, this is energy level 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And notice from 2 to 3 is a big jump. 4 to 5, uh, 3 to 4, not so much. And so, so yes, those lines actually do mean something. And what you want to remember is when that electron is going from a low energy level to a high, it's absorbing that energy. But notice if that electron only jumped to energy level 3 and has to back down to 2, that's going to give us light in the form of red. Hmm. And look at here, when we have an electron going from energy level 4 to energy level 2, it's going to give us a green light. How about 5 to 2? It's going to give us a blue light. And now remember, this is not the only, um, how do I want to say it? These aren't the only options. There's going to be options like 6 to 4, right? So if we have electrons that are going to be excited from the uh, third energy level, let's say, to the sixth energy level, well, when it drops back down to 6 to 4 or 6 to 3, depending on its situation, it's also going to give us maybe a different color of purple or a different color of blue. So that's why when you see the rainbow of light, it's not red orange, yellow, right? It is a, uh, an array of red different colors, an array of yellow, an array of, of blue, and that's why they even call it indigo, right? Between that, that blue and, and purple light. And these are what we're going to call nanometers. Ooh, this is going to give us our wavelength, and that's going to help us decide going from wavelength to frequency, something we're going to talk about in the future as far as how can we relate the color that this uh, these electrons are giving us and in the form of wavelength that's that electromagnetic spectrum we're going to talk about and then we can decide on its frequency so all of these things kind of tie together so make sure that you're writing the different colors with the different arrows that would be that'd be great and you know that in my room I do have uh, markers or uh, colored pencils and crayons as well uh, that you can use if you want to wait until then to kind of color them in. Um, but this is really, really important to understand that uh, electrons absorb as we're going up the energy uh, ladder and they emit energy when they're coming back down the energy ladder, if that's what you want to call it. And of course, it's going to be in different colors. So if you haven't done so already, pause and make sure you have all of this written out in your notes somehow. Okay, we'll see you in class with any questions.